this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Twixter and Smoke on the map. We're going to jump right in and get started. Let's take a look at my original footage. We will use Twixter to retime the shot of the piggy bank breaking with animated keyframes. Of course, there are many things you can also do with Twixter, like speeding up, slowing down, retiming a shot with multiple edits without having to cut it apart, and all of this at fast render speeds and up to 16-bit floating point support. Let's see how. First, let's see how to load a spark in smoke. We will go to the Effects and Sparks menus. Next, you go to an Available Sparks button. If you don't have an Available Sparks button, just hold down the Option key and select a previously loaded Spark button to replace it with a new Spark. This takes you to where you can navigate to the directory where your sparks are. For example, slash user, slash discrete, slash sparks. You can choose Twixter. There's also a desktop version for doing a quick retime. Say you want to slow down by a factor of two. The desktop version will just calculate the proper duration automatically. For people who have batch, of course, the desktop version doesn't work in batch. Now that Twixter is loaded as a Spark, we are in Effects and Sparks and we go to the Edit Desk and select the original clip three times by tapping the top left corner. Twixter utilizes the smoke order of Front, Back, Separation Mat, Destination. If there is no Back, Clip, or Alternate Source, or Mat, then you just select the Source Clip three times and the Destination. Once inside, we see that familiar Twixter menu, that is, if you've used Twixter in any other application. The first thing I like to do is turn off Auto Key because I don't want Twixter to automatically make keyframes if I make a change. Now I will set the display to Output Time to display the result. The source time will be used when we learn about marking segments later on. If this were interlaced footage, I could choose Upper or Lower Field for our input footage. But since it's not interlaced, I will choose None. You would match the output, so I choose None for the output. We will go ahead and leave all of the other options on their default settings. We will leave the frame interpolation on Blend, the quality on Best. For the stretch method, we have two choices. We have Keyframed and we have Speed Factor. I will go ahead and show you a quick example using Keyframed as our stretch method. If you choose this option, Twixter knows to look at the frame slider to figure out which frame from the input to compute. Also, this is the parameter you would use when you want to dynamically remap time. In this example, we want the result clip to be 1200 frames and our original is 544. We will first select the box for the output frame number and change it to 1200. Back at frame 1, you will want to change frame to 1 and set key since we have turned off auto key. This will set frame 1 of our original to frame 1 of our new retimed clip. Now, if we go to frame 1200, we can enter the number 544 in the box next to frame. This will take the last frame of our original clip and remap it to frame 1200, and as a result, will slow down the whole shot overall. We can go back to frame 1 and process. If we play this back, we see that it seems to take forever before the piggy bank crashes. So this might not be the look we want. We could decide which frames we want at what point, and then we'll be able to have a bit more control. We are on output time now, and we saw that it was too slow starting, so let's speed things up a bit at the start. Let's go ahead and add some more keyframes and make the whole clip 800 frames instead of 1200. Now frame 112 is at 351. This is the frame that the piggy has as initial impact. So let's start at frame 100. We can enter 112 in the box next to frame. Remember to set key. This will remap frame 112 to frame 100. We want this crash to be really dramatic, so we want 
it to go extremely slow-mo. Let's drag it out. So we'll go to frame 600 and remap frame 265, which is the frame the impact begins to dissipate. Now let's go to frame 800 and remap frame 544, which is the last frame of the original, to frame 800. If we want, we can also adjust the curves by actually going to animation and we see the curve. We can break the handle to adjust each side independently. I'm going to have it accelerate at the start and again accelerate rather abruptly out of the slow-mo here at the end. Now we go back to frame 1 and process. We always have to go to the frame we want to process from. Check it out. You see it speeds into the slow-mo of the piggy braking, which is extremely slow motion. And then it abruptly speeds up at the end, just as my curves indicated. Now let's look at another feature. Let's say we have this edit consisting of four cuts. We want to slow it down by half. If we go into Twixter and change the duration to 180 and make the stretch method speed stretch, we can make it 0.5 for half speed and leave the display on output time and just process from frame one. If we go to the player, we'll see that we get inappropriate morphing across the edits. This happens because Twixter has no way of knowing where there's an edit point unless we tell it. This is what we do. We go back to Twixter and we can select the clip and the S on Twixter indicating that we want the same clips and settings as the last time we were in Twixter. Incidentally, I should show you how to save the settings. We just select the Save button, and then we can name it, and this will save our setup in the library. Now we will put the display on source time to show the menu for the marking segments. I make the output time 180 again. I choose Speed Stretch as the stretch method. We can keep 0.5 as the speed factor. Now we go to frame 1 because that's the first frame of the first cut. We go to where it says Set Cut and we select Cut A, 1. We see that the menu updates to Menu and M1. Now we go to frame 39 because that is the first frame of the second cut. We want to tell Twixter we have a new cut so that it doesn't morph frames across the edit point. We go to where it says Set Cut and we select Cut B, 2. We see that the menu updates to Menu and M2. Now I go to frame 79, which is the first frame of the third cut, and I go to Set Cut and select Cut C3. We see that the menu updates to Menu and M3. Now we go to the first frame of the last cut, which is frame 88, and go to Set Cut and choose Cut A1 again. Because the numbers and letters are arbitrary, we're just indicating to Twixter that it's a new cut. I can adjust the motion sensitivity now. We need to change the display to output time so we can see the result. I notice that the hands get a bit gloopy and also near the spokes a bit. Motion sensitivity limits how much pixels can move. A value of 0 assures pixels can't move much and a value of 100 allows pixels to move as much as the motion estimator can calculate. I'm going to turn it down a bit so the fingers blend more than they swirl. Let's go back to frame 1 and process. Now we can go to the player and we see that we have a much better result. If we want an even better result, we can make a mat to isolate the hands and use the foreground background mat feature. In this last example, let's see how we can easily retime an alpha mat with the same setting as the color source. We can just go into Twixter and quickly retime this shot, slowing it down by a factor of 0.5 and making it 18 frames. Now we just go back to Twixter using the mat as a foreground layer and the image sequence as the background layer. We can select the back again as the third input 
and select the Edit Desk. The important thing to do is use Alt Motion Back. This way Twixter will analyze the motion from the background image layer and apply it to the new matte layer. We would change the output length to 18 again and we can go to frame 1 and process. Now our matte will match our fill even after it's been retimed. We can see how it works by applying a color correction to the sky using our new retimed matte and fill. There's one last thing that I would like to show you. If you jump back into Twixter and we go to the menu called Control 2, we see a slider box next to Motion Blur Compensate. With this, you can simulate the look of longer or shorter shutter speeds. If you speed up, you can sharpen. And here's an example of if you slow down, you can add motion blur. So these are a few of the things that you can do with Twixter and Smoke.